Good morning, guys. Bright and early. Today is going to be another all day processing day here in the kitchen. If you see behind me, I've got two chickens from last year's batch that were left over in the freezer. I am going to be roasting those today for canning, just plain chicken and maybe some chicken soups. In my stock pot here, I've got it half filled with water and we're going to be, for the first time ever, I have saved, and I know it, some of you might be shocked by this, but yes, for the first time ever, I saved my feet and my necks and we're gonna be making stock. So I'm gonna get that going. I don't have time to process the feet right now, but we'll at least get the stock cooking. So I have, I think, six and a half pounds of necks and like a little over five pounds of feet. I have, my roaster is an 18 quart roaster. And a lot of you guys have asked to see me make my stock. This isn't the normal way I do it outside of, I typically throw just the carcasses in here, but everything else is the same. So let's get down here and let's get to processing. So every um, time I cook, I save all my veggie scraps. There's onion peels bits in here. Um, so we're gonna throw in a lot of the onion. Peels and all, as for good flavor. We're gonna add, this is from processing the carrots. Add the carrots in there, all the bits, ends. The other bag of Chicken necks. Probably eight teaspoons of peppercorns. Throw in probably six bay leaves. And then I'll top this off with water and I'll keep it topped off. We'll probably around lunchtime, I'll come down and process the feet, get those peeled, the ends trimmed off. Oh, one more thing. Need to throw in a splash of apple cider vinegar. Oh, salt too. Ooh, guys, wait till you see this video come out. If it's not come out yet, it will be coming out. And that's a good one if you missed it. I'm super excited to have that on my pantry shelves. Probably a good two teaspoons or so of salt I added. Um, probably needs more than that, because since it's 18 quarts, you figure a teaspoon per quart jar. So we'll just see. That'll be good to start with. All right, let me get this topped off. Like I said, I will be back. We will be adding the feet to this. And I'm not sure if I'll bring you, it just depends how this goes. Chicken canning video today, chicken soup, or what. But regardless, those carcasses, I've got another pot. Once I get the meat off of those, we have more veggie scraps and everything, we will be making more stock with that. So, wish me luck, it's gonna be a long day but I wanna get as much as I can processed and put up. I really need to clean out my freezer. I'm already running out of room on storing my tomatoes for my big batch processing. So yeah, we're gonna to try to get a lot done this, this weekend specifically. Thanks guys, see you in a bit. All right, are you guys ready for this process? <laughs> So I'm here with you, first time ever processing chicken feet. I've never done it before because it gave me the <clears throat> eebie-jeebies, but we're gonna see if we can't figure out how to do this together. So what you have to do, from my understanding, is you gotta take the yellow skin off, which supposedly will peel off, and you have to cut the toenails off. So you blanch them for only a couple few at a time um, for like 30 seconds. I've got had this up to boiling and turned it down to simmer. And 
Then I've got ice water here that will shock them in. Once we can handle them, we'll work them. I'm not gonna go through that whole bag with you guys. Like I said, it's like five pounds of chicken feet, but we'll do the first few together and we'll learn together. Okay, so we'll say that was like 30 seconds. Okay, sorry, the camera just shut off on me. I'm figuring out that if I just slice, take my knife down, trying to figure out the best way to peel them. The skin, yep, it does just peel right off. How about that? I just took the toenails off. There's like a little knuckle digit in there. I'll do that one again on camera, the next one I do. Some people say that they don't peel them though, that they just throw them right in the broth. So I don't really know why other than cleanliness. But these came back to us really, really clean. And so far, okay, so I didn't get that knuckle off. So let's do that one together. Where'd I put my scissors? Do you guys see my scissors? There they are. So, like right below the nail, there's just a little digit that you cut the nails off. I'm not quite sure, again, why other than cleanliness. Like you'll notice if you go to ever see chicken feet at the store, they're white, they're not yellow because they've been peeled already. And I'm definitely never have any intention on eating these. <laughs> I just want to use them for broth. But I know a lot of cuisines eat chicken feet. I wonder if I didn't quite leave them in there long enough. Some of it's a little hard to peel. It's gonna take forever. This is where homesteader friends come in handy for those of you that have family and friends that do this with you. This is be quite the process for just a single person to do, I think. All right. One cleaned chicken foot. I'll throw these in the broth as I clean them and that's all you do. So now you know what I know. <laughs> See you guys in a bit when I'll bring you guys back when the um, broth is done. I'm sure it's gonna be tomorrow cause I like to cook mine a full 24 hours, even 48 hours sometimes. So the only thing that I'm gonna do from now till then is keep that 18 quart roaster topped off with water back with the second batch of stock. So I've got my two chicken carcasses in here with the bones. Also added to that was all the bits that I stuffed the chicken with, like the onion and carrots. Um, I threw in some garlic scapes, the carrots, the onion bits, um, the bay leaves, the peppercorns, exactly like I did the first batch. And now I'm just going to let me just throw in my splash of vinegar so I don't forget. And we're going to just cover it with water. So I do not put the skin in, um, from the chicken in my broth. I did that by accident one time. Fatty, fatty, fatty broth. And I just don't, don't want to deal with that ever again. So this will be a lighter broth just because I don't have that much meat bones. I usually make it with two. Um, actually, I wonder what I could do. I bet I could take some of the neck bones out of this one. So let me show you how this one's going. We've got the feet, the neck bones in here. It smells absolutely divine. I think that's gonna be my best batch of broth ever. Yeah, so I think what I'll do is I'll just take a few of these out and put them in there. I did throw some garlic scapes in this one too. I'm trying to find a neck bone. There we go. Oh, I know what I started to say. I only ended up using half that bag of feet just so I can save the feet for more broth during the winter. That's enough sharing.
right, I have the oven on roast. I'm gonna put this other pot down in there. And then I won't see you guys again until um, tomorrow. Probably tomorrow afternoon we'll come back and we'll can this up. And feel free to ask your questions though, regarding like why did I do something versus another thing or tell me your tips on how, what you add to yours to make it extra special. I know I've done turmeric before, um, and that is just a bit of a unique enough flavor that I wouldn't want that in all of my broth. I would rather add turmeric to recipes. So let me put this in here. Ooh. We are good to go. So I'll see you guys back here tomorrow while we jar it all up. I'll be also canning chicken at that time. Probably not including that in this video, but if you're interested in how I can chicken, um, I'll have a re um, video coming out on that. So yeah, I'm done for the day, I think. Bread's made, broth's going, chicken's canned. So see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the kitchen. I just pulled out the oven chicken broth, which if you remember was the one I did with just the two carcasses from canning chicken, which I just filled the canned chicken. But I wanna show you the broth, how it turned out for this batch. Uh, lighten up, there you go. And uh, looks super yummy, nice and rich. Um, so what I I'm gonna do is I'm being tricky and trying to figure out how to do two videos at once, specifically canned chicken, and then people always ask how I make my broth, so that's its own video which you're watching today. So I've also still got the roaster going that has the feet and the necks for the majority in it. So I'm going to start canning all my broth now. I've got two, four, six, eight, nine pints of canned chicken, and I need to get canners going outside to get this off my plate today. So let me grab my jars and I'll be right back and I'll show you how I jar it up. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just take out the bulk of the bits. Which all of this will go to the pigs. They will be very happy. They got a lot of it this morning from processing these chicken carcasses. And you'll see like how much the bones break down. Throwing that apple cider vinegar in there is uh, one tip that I learned to get the um, good marrow and everything out of your bones. Okay, that is all the bits. I had to get a bigger, bigger bowl pulled out. Now, I, di I didn't get everything, but I got the majority of it. So what I have is just a little sieve. I put that in my funnel, and then I just filter my broth through that to get any little bits out. And then I'll fill the, each jar, I'm doing pints with this badge, um, I'll fill each jar to one inch of pet space. I get so many questions on whether or not I heat my jars before filling them. The answer is no, not in the summer because my house stays warm. There's the broth. Beautiful. Um, during the winter though, when I winter can, I will. I'll throw my jars in the microwave for a little bit to heat them up. And you're just doing that so you don't shock your jars and they break on you when you fill them with something very hot. Right, awesome, that is nine pints, exactly what my canner holds. So let's get those 
put in the canner. Loading them on the ground just because it's easier to lift this canner outside that way. All right, that one is set. Yay, now I'm gonna go have Todd help me put this outside on the can um, outside Camp Chef stove. I'll be back and we will tackle the feet and neck broth, which I'm really excited to try. All right, are you guys ready to see this one? I'm excited. So just to let you know, I just topped it off once last night before I went to bed. It had only dropped maybe a half an inch or so. But this one looks really rich and delicious. Woohoo! It's been going just under 24 hours. Like I said yesterday, I really prefer to go 36 hours, but I have a lot to do. Family's coming into town Tuesday, and I've got some just pick up around the house type stuff to do, and I really wanna get caught up on almost all my canning and hopefully get all these videos made for you guys this weekend so that while family's in town, I can visit and not have to film. So I'm not quite sure how much we're gonna get. I always forget, I am doing quartz with this batch. So I think what I'm thinking about in this video is like how to decide how to end it. Like do I end it with canning or do I end it with after they've cooled and we'll see if we don't get any of that gelling effect to our broth that I've never gotten before by using the feet. Hmm. I haven't decided yet. So I think I'm hoping at least to start with nine quarts and if we get more, that's great. I have my other pressure canner here that I can't double stack. You know what I should have done? I should have did my pints and that one and my quarts and the All-American. I wasn't thinking. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is the same thing. I'm gonna get all these bits out of the broth and then we'll come back and we'll, maybe we'll taste the difference because I have the two a little bit left in the other roaster pan and some in this and I'll let you know if I taste anything different. And if you are watching this during the month of August 2020 <coughs> through maybe mid-September, we are running a t-shirt merchandise sale, t-shirts, hoodies, kids t-shirts. I'll leave the link in the description below in case you're interested. They're a little bit different than this. They're white lettering, um, several different colors for your, your choice. Okay, I just wiped all the lids and I've got seven quarts ready, which is what I think hot will fit in my canner. And I think I'm gonna get 13, 14 quarts, so that's good. All right, so I'm gonna take these outside with the others, get them canning. Hopefully they'll come to pressure at the same time if all works out well. And uh, I won't have to sit out there babysitting them for too long, but so yeah, mm, I wish I could decide right now. It, it just really depends on how my day guys goes on whether or not I'll end it with pulling them out of the canner or, wrong way, or um, then tomorrow when, once they set up, if they set up. Okay, presto to the magic. See you guys in a bit. Okay, so just a quick update. The first canner, the All-American with the double stack pints is done. Um, I just turned it off, so I've got to let it sit for 10 minutes before, or 20 minutes, however long it takes for the pressure to release. And then I went ahead and started canning up some green beans. We will do the remaining chicken broth and green beans in the next batch. And I've decided today's also gonna be a salsa day because I'm out of freezer space, you guys, in my freezer. 
So I'm gonna go pull those up. I won't include that in this video. Just to let you guys know, I'm not gonna do a salsa canning video this year because I'm doing the exact same recipe that I did last year. So I will link here the salsa video that I did. It's a zucchini salsa, so it stretches your tomato base really far and it's super good. So I'm gonna do that. But yeah, it's going good. And that outdoor cooker, this is my first time pressure canning on it. And it's almost easier than indoors to maintain my pressure. Just turn it on low and it holds. So pretty cool. I'm very happy with that. That will be linked in the description too if you're interested in that Camp Chef. We're not affiliates. It's just something that we bought ourselves. So I will see you guys back when it's done, done, done. Okay. Hear that little ping, ping, ping. So I've got, let me get out of the way. I've got chicken broth in my pints right there. Chicken broth down here, the quartz, and all that chicken broth up there on top of the grill. Plus I got the green, four quarts of green beans done. So I don't think I need to wrap up this video. So if you have the opportunity to follow me on Instagram, follow me over there and I'll show a picture um, maybe tomorrow, whether or not I get any kind of gel consistency from using those chicken feet. But I have a lot to do. I just brought in all the onions from our onion harvest. They're done curing. Um, and I need to go pick up some flowers from the nursery for the wedding um, reception thing, not reception, but rehearsal dinner that we're hosting here this week. So thanks guys for watching, following along. If you have any tips or comments on using those chicken feet and necks, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll talk to you guys later.